Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a Lego ragdoll minifig using rigid body constraints in Blender, so that you can basically have your minifig doing all sorts of flips and tricks and simulated stuff without having to hand animate any of it, which is a lifesaver if you know how tedious hand animation can be. So the first thing you're going to want to do, open up a new blend file, save it first off, because if you don't, bad things are going to happen. Once you've done that, A, then delete, delete everything. Go to File, Import, Mechabricks, Import your minifig, or your ragdoll minifig, like so. Delete the empty. Then, since this is gonna be a glorified stunt double, pretty much, if you have another minifig you want as your main animated one, oh no, import that one too, so you can link all the textures and make everything happy. Select this, because you can't you can't animate the ragdoll one. It's just ragdoll. It doesn't if you try to animate stuff, use a rig, it'll break. So you're gonna go into viewport render mode. Then if you want, you can just link up the textures like so. Link materials, control L. Draw that fun stuff and just do that for every piece so that it'll be physically identical, plus a copy over the hair. But I don't really care about that right now because this is just for the tutorial. Next, go back into solid mode. What you're going to want to do is fix the joints so that they don't ruin the simulation. I'm going to click on this button over here. Go into edit mode. Make sure you select one of this. Shift S, cursor to selected. And then W, bring up the free select. Make sure you have it all G. Shift S, selection the cursor, and that'll get that out of the way so it doesn't clip when you actually do the simulation. Same thing for this arm. Shift S, still in agate mode. Grab all this, better than I'm doing. Use G to make sure you got it all. Shift S again. Then those look good. I'm going to do the same thing for the torso here. Let's see if we can. There we go. First try. Shift S, same thing for the other side. Shift S. Oh, but first need to realign 3D cursor. Let's do that again. Perfect. Last but not least, the torso, the head part of the torso. Be a tiny bit trickier. Try to grab two sides across from each other. Doesn't have to be perfect, but makes it look nicer at least. Shift S, there we go, that's all taken care of. Now your minifigure should be almost ready to go. Now you just need to join some of the parts together to make it work well with the simulation, like I said before. So select the hand, then the arm, order is important, Control J to join, hand, then arm, Control J. Then last but not least, torso, or waist and the torso, Control J. That should be good to go. Now select the head, go over here, Rigid body, make sure it's active. Make sure you change the collision shape to mesh. This will make the collision more accurate and not cause weird errors that'll screw everything up. Once you've done that, select the whole minifig. Make sure the head is selected last. Go to object, rigid body, copy from active. This will just add the shape being mesh so they don't have to do it for every single one because that is a pain. Almost there. Next, you're just gonna go click on the arm, start there. Add rigid body constraint, type generic, and let's see, don't select this, select these two, change it to zero. Oh, that didn't work. Change it to zero for all of those, then for all of these, select them all, zero as well. Last but not least, select this first, select the torso second, so that's what it's parented to. That should be the arm all taken care of. Next to the other arm, same exact process. Change it to generic, not checked, check these two, change them to zero. The linear all become zero for all of them, so that'll be consistent. First is always the object you're on, second is always the torso. Then that should be both arms working. To test that out, cursor to world origin, so just make a quick plane so it's something to collide with. Rigid body, passive, saving just because, you can never be too careful. And then it should, yeah, this will all fall apart, but the, arts, the arms will stay attached. 
Should this is exactly what we want to see. That should all be good. Now let's do the legs. Very similar process. Rigid body to generic, except this time to legs. Check all of these. These two are zero again. This is going to be negative 70 to 120. And we just have it move like a regular Lego leg. These are all constrained to regular hinge properties. If you want it to be freeform, just tweak these values until it looks good. But for now, it's gonna stick with the default. Change all these to zero. First, the object. Second is the torso, of course. And that should be all taken care of. On the second leg, exact same process. Generic, negative 70, then 120. These two are both zero again. Linear, all zero. First the leg, second the torso. Now the leg should both be attached. Looking good, it's not moving right now because nothing to move to, it's just upright. Last but not least is the head. The exact same process, just slightly different. See for the head, check this. Zero, zero. Y is free, zero, also zero, zero. And of course, linear is all zero, so the head doesn't go flying around. First is the head, second is the torso. And that should be everything. Let's see, oh, of course. Let's change the speed up here. Rigid body world, speed three. Tends to look more accurate. It's taking its sweet time, but once it goes, you'll see it starts flopping around like a little rag doll that it is. So, last but not least, just to finish this whole thing up, let's select everything. Shift S, cursor to selected, just get to the center of it. Add a new empty, it can be whatever you want. Just like to do a cube, make it look nice. Uh, try to get roughly the same size, it doesn't matter, it has no effect on it, it's just for looks. And this will just be used to control the ragdoll to position it wherever you want. Have it look nice, select everything, all the minifig, and then make sure this is selected last. Control P, parent to object. Now you can move this wherever you want. When you start the simulation, it will fall out and do this little ragdoll thing. Or it's all over the place. It's pretty awesome. And there you go. That should be all you need for Lego Ragdoll. So, like I said before, if you want the arms to move freely and not just like a regular minifig, you can go here, play around with these values. And I don't remember exactly what the values were, it depends on the look you're going for, but just mess around with these and they'll be pretty great. But aside from that, that should be everything. You should now have a functioning Lego ragdoll that you can use for all of your twisted, violent purposes. One last thing, if you want multiple Lego ragdolls, all you have to do is just take this whole thing, make sure you're at frame zero to not cause errors, select this whole thing, shift D, and now you've got more of them. Problem is it'll be the same minifig each time, the same decals, but just plan accordingly. If you want it to have different decorations, be a different minifigure, you have to do the whole process over again, unfortunately, but it's not too tedious, as you saw, it shouldn't take long at all. So I hope this has been helpful and that you've enjoyed. If you want any more tutorials, let me know what they should be on. Peace.